What is up guys? Welcome to So Hills Kids. I am super glad you're watching. And guys, today's a big one. Why? One, because it's December. Who's not excited? We are going to be going through some fun things this month. And also, we're changing up a little bit of our series. That's right. We are on to a new section. You see, we've been talking about uh, if, if God was in control of everything. And, and we, we really learned that God is in control of everything. And nothing is outside of His good plan. And that was awesome. And now we're going to figure out if God really keeps his promises. You see, God makes a lot of promises throughout the Bible. He promises Abraham that he will make him a father of many nations. He promised Adam and Eve that he would crush the snake's head, right? And end evil altogether. And there's hundreds more promises in the Bible that we're going to discuss. But ultimately, we know that yes, God's promises are true. And we're going to discuss that. And we're going to open this up with another huge character in the Bible that we'll be talking about for a few weeks. And if you don't know him, it's Moses. That's right. Moses, who delivers Israel from Egypt. So let's get a little backstory. And then we're going to jump into this week. So we're going to be talking about Moses uh, because, well, he's got an interesting story. He was an Israelite. And Pharaoh said, we need to kill all the Israelite babies because they're getting too strong. Why did he say that? Well, because Pharaoh had enslaved Israel. So Moses survives by a crazy series of events and grows up in Egypt. And well, ultimately, he runs away. And we're going to get into that. So let's dive into today's story and we'll recap it after that. I'll see you guys after the video. Joseph's family in Egypt grew even after Joseph, his brothers, and their families died. All the people in this family were known as Israelites because they came from Joseph's father, Jacob, who was also called Israel. When a new pharaoh came to power in Egypt, he was afraid of the Israelites. Pharaoh worried they would all fight against him. So Pharaoh made the Israelites slaves, and he gave them very hard work to do. Still, their families grew, so Pharaoh ordered for all their baby boys to be killed. Around this time, a woman gave birth to a son. She hid him as long as she could, and then she put him in a basket and set the basket along the bank of the Nile River. Soon, Pharaoh's daughter went to the river to take a bath. She found the baby and felt sorry for him. Pharaoh's daughter wanted the baby to be her son. The princess named the baby Moses. Moses grew up as a prince in Egypt. One day, he saw an Egyptian man mistreating an Israelite man. Moses killed the Egyptian and then fled from Egypt. He worked as a shepherd in another land for many years. Back in Egypt, the Israelite people were miserable. They cried out to God, and God heard them. He had a plan to take them. One day, Moses saw a bush on fire. The bush was not burning up. Suddenly, God called from the bush, Moses, Moses. Moses replied, here I am. God told Moses to take off his sandals because Moses was standing on holy ground. Then God said, I have seen how my people are suffering. I want you to lead them out of Egypt to a good land I have for them. What if they ask for your name, Moses said. What should I tell them? I am who I am. God said, tell them, I am has sent me to you. Well, what, what if they don't believe me? Moses asked. So God gave Moses three miraculous signs to prove that God had appeared to him. Moses' staff would turn into a snake. His hand would become diseased and then healed. And water from the river would turn into blood. But Moses still made excuses. He said, please send someone else. God was angry, but agreed to send Moses' brother, Aaron, with him. So Moses went to Egypt. God saved Moses' life and called him to rescue God's people from slavery. The calling of Moses points to a greater calling and rescue, the call of Jesus to come to earth to save God's people. Jesus gave up his life to save us from slavery to sin.
isn't that a crazy series of events? Moses is a baby. He's in a basket. Pharaoh's daughter finds it. He ra he's raised in Egypt. He becomes an Egyptian uh, higher up, right? He's uh, he's really high up in Egypt, and then he kills a guy, runs away, comes comes back, or that's where we're ended, right? I love the cliffhanger because we've got more, right? But why was he coming back? Because God called him. That's right. God called Moses. Now, what's the point of the story? What are we drawing from the story? Well, there's a few things. First, the people of Israel cried out to God. They had been slaves for 400 years. That's a lot. You see, two weeks ago, we talked about how Joseph was in jail for like five years. That's a long time. But imagine being slaves for 400 years, guys. Do you know how many families and generations that is that were enslaved because Pharaoh was evil and he was wicked and they did work all day, every day. They never got a break and that's just how it was. And they were miserable. So they cried out to God and they said, God, deliver me. And well, we know God made a promise to Abraham that his people would be a mighty nation, that they would have their own land. And right now that promise wasn't coming true, obviously. And so that's what Moses was for. You see, Moses had fled after killing that Egyptian. He fled. He ran away. And then God calls him. So where we get the story of the burning bush. The bush is on fire, but it's not being consumed. And God is there. And he calls Moses. And here's the thing. Here's another thing we can learn. Moses is scared. God says, and it's a promise, you will deliver my people. And Moses says, uh, no. Right? He's scared. Why? Well, one, he's scared of Pharaoh. And two, he says he can't speak. Now, I think that might be just a little bit of an excuse. You see, Moses had a stutter. Uh, and, well, he couldn't talk well. He wasn't eloquent in how he talked. But also, you have to think, he was raised by Pharaoh. And I think Pharaoh might have taught him a few things on how to talk and lead well. You think he might have been the king. So, he might have learned a lot of good techniques. And I think Moses was just making an excuse. You see, Moses, like all of us, might have doubted God's promise that he would deliver his people. So I'm going to tell you a story about my own life, right? God has always called me to be, well, what I am right now, a pastor, to preach and teach his word to kids like you. Well, let's just say Sam, Sam kind of got scared. He got cold feet. He wasn't sure if God would follow through with that call. You see, God had promised that he would give me something, right? He said, you know, be a pastor, and I promise it'll work out for you. But I didn't really trust that promise, and I tried to do something else, and it didn't work. I was miserable. I hated it. Yet almost as soon as I started, I stopped, and I chose to follow God's plan. And I didn't know where it would take me. I didn't think for sure that I'd be working at Southern Hills, my family and my church that I love. But here I am today getting to teach you guys, all of you kids, about Jesus and how much he loves you. And guys, it is a true blessing. And if I'd continued running, maybe I wouldn't be here today. But you see, God's promises are always true. He always keeps his promise. And so that's what I want to tell you guys today. That even if you're scared, even if you feel like you don't know what's happening, you're not sure what's going on, you don't know if God can keep his promises and keep you safe or uh, get you where you need to be or where he's promised to put you. But here's the thing. God's promises are always true. You see, just like Moses was delivering the people of Israel, Jesus delivered us. And he's there for us. After dying on the cross and raising to life, he is there to love us and care for us and lead us through his spirit and through his word. So trust God, trust Jesus, and trust what they have to offer, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We are going to keep talking about God's promises and Moses, and I am so excited to do so. So with that, I'm going to see you guys next week with our next episode. Bye.